pretty well, Pat. Uh, you all know David probably. If you've taken any of our courses, you probably have had it at least one of them. David? So are you. Hello, hello. Is that working? Okay. Right, well, welcome everybody. As Milton says, my name's David Shingfield, and I'm one of the instructors for the, uh, for the Learning Centre here. And uh, just before we start the talk for today, I thought I'd do a little bit of advertising and talk about our courses. Now, for March, we've got uh, four courses that we're running, um, some of them starting tomorrow. But we've got uh, an intermediate word processing class, three sessions, and as of this moment, there are still a couple of empty seats available if anybody wants to learn about word processing. Moving your picture, pictures from your camera to your computer. A lot of people struggle with getting their pictures off their camera and getting them onto the computer so they can play with them. Um, we've got a session uh, starting again. I think it's, uh, there's one session, sorry, that should say the 3rd of March. Um, I'm doing the downloading from the internet course, which starts tomorrow, and I'm afraid that's full. We're already fully subscribed, so I've got eight people signed up already. But we do have some space available for the making greeting cards and calendars, which takes place again this month. So anybody who's interested, just talk to Eleanor or Helen Marie at the back, and we'd love to see you on these classes for this month. If you look forward to April, we're running four classes then. Um, Steve's running a class on spreadsheets, how to organize your data on a spreadsheet, something like Excel, um, there's lots of alternatives, um, but uh, you can talk it all through and you can use it even for balancing your checkbook if you want. Um, Lynn is doing a class on using Picasa. Picasa is a free program from Google that many people are using to organize their photographs. It's a great program, does an awful lot more than most of us realize, and to spend uh, three sessions with Lynn going through what Picasso does for you, um, I mean, one of the things she showed me is that uh, she had some pictures of her grandchildren, and she uh, uh, focused on the face of one of the grandchildren, and Picasso went away and found all the photographs in all her photograph albums that included that grandchild, and pulled them all together. Very smart. So it actually has got face recognition software built into it that you can use. But all these little tricks to help you organize your photographs, uh, download them from your camera and put them onto Picasso. Great program. Uh, simple photo editing. Picasso also includes a, an ability to edit your pictures. You can make them smaller, you can make them bigger, you can make the sky blue if it's a grey dull day. Uh, if you're really clever, you might be able to uh, change somebody's face from uh, me to somebody else. But that gets a bit more sophisticated. But Sol's doing a class on photo editing in April. And uh, I always feel a bit nervous about following Mary Kay. She knows so much about the iPad. But she's running a class on using the iPad with two sessions in April. So anybody who's got an iPad, come along and uh, join in. So there are March and April courses, and you know the way it works. If you show an interest on our course request form for a particular subject, and if we get enough people asking for it, we find an instructor who can teach it, and we include it on our schedule. So if there's something you want, make sure you put it down as an interest, and it'll get on the schedule for future months. OK, enough of the advertising. I giving this talk on mastering your hard drive. When I, I thought this was a great idea when I started. Uh, and as I started to put it together, I thought this is going to drive everybody in the room crazy. So as I go through this, this is a, a little bit more technical than perhaps some of the other talks we've had. Uh, I'll try and go slowly, and if there are questions, just stop me and we can ask. But it, uh, I realized as I was trying to put the material together, it may just, uh, people may look at this and say, really? But we'll see how we go. Um, the other bit of information is, 12 months ago, in, yes, 12 months ago, February, like, last month, um, I gave a talk here on backing up your hard drive. Um, we spent about an hour going through what you needed to do to make sure that you protected the information that was on your computer. Because, as I keep telling everybody, your computer will stop working at some point. It's not if, it's just a matter of when. 
and it's very important that you've all got a copy of the important stuff you want to keep. We've got photographs of the grandchildren, we've got letters to the bank, uh, you've got lots of email contacts, and it really is annoying if you wake up one morning, turn your computer on, and it says, sorry, can't find anything, it all disappeared. And whilst you may be able to recreate it, it's more trouble than it's worth. So making sure you had a backup was very important. And I did that course last February, a year ago. Now, as part of that course, I talked about how I did my backups. And there were a couple of details in there that I skipped over because they were a little more complicated. And what this talk does today is to fill in those gaps. So for those of you who are really interested in backing up your computer, you may want to go on the internet and look at the presentation I did a year ago, backing up your computer, and then have a look at this one and see how that's going to uh, help you decide that's the way to manage your, your computer going forward. I've covered a lot of the uh, overlap stuff, but that's how this particular course came together. But let's just do a little bit of background here. So, you've got a computer. All the information that is stored in your computer is stored on something called a hard drive. Um, and I try and explain this as being like a filing room. For those of you who worked in office complexes or industry, you always remember the rooms with filing cabinets that were scattered all the way along corridors, and you had invoices and stuff from uh, suppliers and vendors, and people would have to file them in the right places. And all what you've got on your computer is a way of storing that information in a much simpler and easier way. And the way it works is that the hard disk itself, it's actually physically much smaller than I've shown it here, but it looks a bit like the um, record players we used to have in the 60s and 70s that you could stack 8 or 10 vinyl LPs on. I'm sure that many people here will remember these things. Um, and what it is, you've got, the, uh, you've got the discs here that spin round. The big difference between the hard drive nowadays and the old record players is that each of the platters that you've got on, the, uh, on here, each of them have got a separate record arm to read the information. So that you can read the information off uh, 6, 7, 8 at the same time. And of course, the other bit of uh, big difference is that the size is much smaller and the clearances and space is actually minute. But that in, that's where all the information is stored on your computer, and if something goes wrong with it, your computer's not going to work. Sometimes these things fail. Now, just to give you a, a scaling of this, I thought this was interesting. I got this picture, you've probably seen these um, Western Digital Passport drives, they're the size of a pack of cards. You can get them in any color you want, and you just plug them into your USB drive, and it uh, acts as an external hard drive for your computer. And I suspect a number of people in here have got something similar to that. But now, the size of these is going from 300 gigabytes to over 600 gigabytes. And people say, well, uh, big numbers, but so what? What does that mean? So I did a quick calculation. You all know the complete works of Shakespeare. So I said, let's take the complete works of Shakespeare and let's see how many of that we can put on one of these external drives. And when I did the calculation, I fed it all across and I discovered I could get 100,000 copies of the complete works of Shakespeare on one of these little drives that uh, we can now plug into our computer and probably even put into our shared pockets. So, Nowadays, the key thing is that the amount of information that we can store in our computers is basically unlimited. You can keep all the photos you want, you can keep all the emails you have ever received, you can keep all the checks you've written for the last 30 years, all the tax returns that you did for the last 25 years, they can all sit on there and you're still not going to fill it up. Um, Milt often says that he's got a much smaller hard drive and he hasn't even succeeded in filling 10% of it yet. Do they have the same kind of hard drive that you just showed us? Yes, they do. Yeah. Do they have pockets like this? They do. Yeah. And they spin around inside those little boxes. Yeah. And uh, the, these, uh, these drives, interestingly now, 
are somewhere between 40 and 90 bucks. And you can buy them, I, I didn't actually check the current prices on Amazon, but they're relatively inexpensive. And it has one cable, and it just plugs into a little thing called the USB port on the side of your computer, uh, if it's a laptop or in the front, if it's a desktop. But more than enough space. So first thing you need to remember is you're going to accumulate an awful lot of stuff, and backing it up is important. Now, what do we store on our hard disks? This I talked about in that backing up class, but let's just recap for a moment. The first bit of information that's stored there is all the um, information about Windows itself. When you've got a computer, it, uh, you turn it on, there's a picture on the screen, there's files, there's uh, um, my documents, and my pictures, and you can control panels. All this stuff is part of Windows. And that's stored on your, in your hard drive. It's all part of the information that's stored there. And typically, that either comes fully installed when you buy your computer new, so you get a new computer and the manufacturer has already installed it, and sometimes they'll give you a CD or a DVD, and in some cases a restore disk. Um, I'm finding increasingly now that the manufacturers are trying to save money and they're not giving you an extra disk with the windows on it, they're just saying we've hidden it in a secret place on the hard drive and if you want a copy you'll have to make one yourself, which means you have to go out and buy a DVD to uh, copy it across if you want to do that. But the first bit of information that's stored on your hard drive is Windows itself. So if something goes wrong with the hard drive, nothing's going to work. The next bit of information we've got is the programs that we use to do useful things with our computers. We all use them for something, even if it's just playing free cell or solitaire. We've all got something we do. All those things we do with our computer are our programs. And there's a whole list of these. Um, the numbers are, I hate to think, but how many would you think, Clark? We're up in the millions, I would think, of programs for the PC. It must be uh, million, hundreds of thousands. But the ones that everybody will know is things like Microsoft Word and Excel, uh, Quicken for managing your checkbook, Firefox is a browser, Picasa, uh, I mentioned earlier the Replicator program, which uh, Karen puts out. There are hun hundreds of programs. Our virus protection software is more of it. And all of these programs are the extra information that you put on your computer to, again, make it unique to you and make it work the way that you want. So we're all going to have this information, and probably we're either going to get them from the Internet, these programs, or we're going to go to Best Buy and uh, buy a CD. So we've got a couple of ways of getting them, but typically these are the programs that we add on our computer because of the things we want to do with it. So my computer will look different from yours. The third block of information, which is probably in my mind the most important, is what I describe as your data. And this is the information that you put on the computer that nobody else has. If you take a photograph of your grandchildren and you put it on your computer, You've got it on your camera, and you've got it on your computer. Nobody else has got a copy at the moment. You write a letter to the bank saying, uh, I disagree with how much you've uh, charged me, or the fact you didn't pay me any interest last year. Um, you're the only person, with, apart from the bank, who's got that letter. So nobody else can re recover that for you. But it's got a lot of bits of information in there. I've picked up here photographs of the grandkids, your... I mean, one of the things I use my computer for is I do my, not my checkbook using Quicken on the computer. And I've got 15 years of uh, checks that I've written. And it's, I don't keep a check register anymore, it's all on the computer. So it's important, this information is mine, it's unique to me, and I want to make sure I've got a good copy, so if something goes wrong with my computer, I can get it back without feeling too embarrassed. Um, it's also got all my contacts. And over, uh, we've all found, I suppose, that uh, the more we use email, our contact list gets longer and longer, and we have contact from work, and contact from the computer learning center, and contact from the university, and whatever. So, lots of bits of information. Now, all of those three things are stored on your hard drive, and that's the information that we need to protect. The interesting thing that I point out to everybody 
is that the window, this piece here, the windows and the programs can be recreated because they're either things you've bought or you've got on a CD. It's not unique to you, everybody's is the same. If I'm using Windows 7 and you're using Windows 7, that program is identical. If you use Excel and I use Excel, it's identical. So we can recreate that if we, were, if we needed to. But the spreadsheets that I created using Excel, or the letters I type out using Word, are unique to me and nobody else has got them. So I found it very important to make sure that I keep lots of copies of this, because that's the bit that's unique to me. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Yes. Now, just a, a quickie. In Windows, um, the My Data is stored really in three places. We, those of us who are sensible, will keep all our information in My Documents, which is going to include my pictures and my music and my videos, if you did any of that. It's also going to include your favourites or bookmarks that you use on the uh, internet. And it also will pick up your email contacts, emails and contacts. And they're the three main blocks of information that I find that I have to uh, look after and protect. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is the talk that I gave last February. How to back up your computer and protect your information. And you can go back and uh, see it on the internet under the presentations phase if you need to. But the reason this was important at the time, and it still applies, is to create a copy of our private and personal information so we can recover it when disaster strikes. And secondly, to return the computer to its working condition as soon as possible. And uh, as I say, there is that frustration that things go wrong with your computers, with viruses or anything else, and we need to be able to do this. Interesting, a small uh, side note. I don't know whether some of you may have heard, but over the last 48, 72 hours, Google, uh, which runs a, an email program called Gmail, which is extremely popular, has had a very big problem. It erased about 100, uh, I think they said uh, 500,000 people who have Gmail accounts and all their emails. And uh, they're panicking at the moment and trying to put it all together. I think this morning they got it back. But for the last uh, three, two or three days, you couldn't access any of your emails on Gmail if you were one of this unfortunate group. And uh, it was just a, an interesting comment, and the comment that uh, somebody wrote at the bottom, make sure you've got a copy of what you need to keep yourself. Don't trust it just to these people who keep it up on the cloud and look, think they can do it from, uh, from Google. Okay. Now, the end part of the presentation that I gave about backing up your computer was how I do it at home. And it was when I started to talk about this that there were a couple of steps in there that were quite complicated, and that's what I want to talk through at the moment. But my, my solution to backing up the computer is I've got a desktop at home that I use for most of my information, and when I turned it on, the computer said I needed to upgrade my brain to be compatible with the new software. So, just to uh, keep us all going, we're going to have to uh, see if we can stay up with this new stuff. But the solution that I use is that I've taken this filing room, this hard disk that's on my computer, and I've divided it into two partitions, two separate filing rooms. It's like having two filing cabinets, one for Windows and programs, and the second one for my data. And that's great because it means now that I can uh, easily just back up the data that I keep and I keep it separate from where my Windows is. But I'm going to show you how, to, how I did that. And it's what, most of this presentation is about how we make that split so we can divide up the drive into different pieces. So, what my hard drive looks like on my computer is now like this. So I've got a one drive, it's one, one box. It isn't two separate boxes, but as far as the computer is concerned, it thinks there are two completely independent hard drives in the computer. And it really separated it out into two boxes. C drive, which I'm sure that most of you will recognize when you go on my computer from your PCs, and a new one that's called drive D, which I put my data in. That's where I keep my photographs and my letters and uh, spreadsheets and whatever. 
And I set up the disk to work like that, so um, I'll go through how we do some of that. Now, this is where you get your eyes glaze over. Don't glaze over too quickly. There's a couple of technical bits that you just need to have a little bit of background to and you can remember and then forget. But there are basically three types of partitions, uh, three types of separation of these drives, but you only really need to think about the first and the third. So two are only really the important ones. There are primary partitions and logical partitions. So we've got our primary partitions. We can set up to uh, three, and I'm taking a little bit of political license, but effectively we can set up three partitions. The key thing about these, pri these primary partitions is you can only see one at any one point in time. And the reason that we would do this is if we have more than one operating system on our computer. Now, Windows 7 came out about a year ago. Um, many people in this room, I suspect, are still using XP, Windows XP. Now, you might think there's this new Windows 7 out there. Oh, it's new. I'm very happy with Windows XP. It works great. But I'd like to try Windows 7 to see if it's better, but I don't want to give up XP. So there's a way we can do that by using these partitions. And I can put my Windows XP into one partition, and I can load Windows 7 into a second one. And when I turn my computer on, it can ask me a question and say, do I want to run Windows XP, or do I want to run Windows 7? And the computer will then make a decision, sort it all out, and you can just choose. So, let me just go back a step. So, what we could do is, if we wanted, we could have these two primary partitions, and if we wanted then, we could load Windows 7 in uh, into a second partition, and we could choose which one to turn on when we switch our computer on in the morning. Now the other partition is a logical partition, and you can have as many of these as you want. But I'm going to keep it simple, and let's just assume we have one of these. And that's the partition where I put my data. This is where I keep my photographs, my letters, and all the other bits and pieces. So what I've done is I've got my computer at home divided up where I've got two primary partitions and one logical partition. So I can, when the computer turns on, it's going to say, do you want to turn on Windows XP or Windows 7? And I'll, so at the moment I say Windows 7 all the time, because I'm using that more and more, and XP becomes less important to me. But, uh, and also, it's got a separate partition where I've got all my information stored. Okay. Now, the question that I didn't answer when I did my previous talk was, how do you do this? And it's, uh, this is the information that I, I skipped over and just said you could divide it up into lots of partitions. So what I wanted to talk through with you for a few minutes is the steps you need to go through to break up your computer into these separate, uh, separate packets of information. Yes, we have a question over here. Yes, ma'am. Right. No, it's not faster. It's, it's because I can then just say to my backup program, copy everything of my data, um, data partition every day. My Windows partition and my programs don't change very much. Only when I put a new program in. But my data partition has content in it that changes every day. I'm adding a new photograph, I'm writing a new letter, I'm producing a new spreadsheet, I'm writing a new presentation for the, the uh, learning centre. So all this stuff is stored in my, uh, in my data partition. <clears throat> now, there's a difference between Windows XP and Windows 7. Windows XP didn't include any facility to divide your hard drive up into separate partitions. And you needed then, if you're going to use XP, you need to have a separate program. Uh, Vista is, I've got Vista as the third one on my machine. I think Vista does have a facility to do this, but I'm not 100% sure. I do know they put it, 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 Vista and 7 are similar, and it's certainly included in 7, but I haven't tried to do it in, in Vista, I'm afraid. Right. Uh, 
It's got a D, D, what, is there anything in the D, D button? Well, she was very small, so I had to go use the D. Ah, what, what, uh, let me come, that, I will pick up in a second, if I may, because that's what, uh, that'll, that'll come up. Let me just walk through, quickly go through the, uh, what you need to do with XP. Um, I, do, I use some software called Acronis Disk Director, cost me 36 bucks from Amazon. Um, it works fine, but I'm going to just show you the key steps that you go through. If you've got an XP computer, you will need this extra program, which is not included with, uh, with uh, XP. So, when you turn your computer on, this is my, hub, the, my laptop that is just at the back there, and this is when I click on my computer, this is what it looks like. You'll see that there's, uh, it starts off with the normal shared documents and David's documents, and you all have things similar to that. And then it will say down here, local disk C. And it's got the size and a few other bits of information, and it will also have the DVD or CD drive at the bottom. <coughs> and I'm sure that when you turn your computers on, that's what you would see if you clicked on my computer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that hard drive and divide it into two pieces, two separate pieces. And I'm going to end up, when I've finished, with a local disk C and a local disk D. And then it's going to make sure this one will then become an E drive. So let's just pick it up. So when I put in my Acronis program and I open it up, I end up with almost the same information. I've got my local volume C shown here. And it lists it down here and it shows the space I'm using at the bottom. So it's got very similar information to looking at, uh, looking at my computer. And on the left, it's got an opportunity to resize the volume. Now this is the volume, this bit here. So it's the full area of what I've got in my C drive at the moment is called a volume. That's the technical term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to resize volume and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to try and change that size and make it smaller. And I go up to the top and you'll see there's a little button at the end here. I can drag that to the left and lo and behold, when I've done that, and click, go, and work through it all, what happens is the computer comes up just under the red there. It says local disk C, which is now smaller, and I've got an unallocated piece underneath it. And unallocated means you've got empty space and we haven't done anything with it. So now I go to create a volume, and I just click on it. If I just look at the bottom here, here you'll see the C drive, and here you'll see the bit that is unallocated. So I then went to create a volume, and I did, went through, what does that say? Logical, I had to fill in a couple of questions as I go through, uh, assign a drive letter to it, what am I going to call it? And lo and behold, when I've done it, I've created local disk C that's now a bit smaller, and I've got a data partition that is that size. And lo and behold, it's all divided into two filing rooms. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can make them as big or as small as you want. Um, uh, I think that with I'm working at the moment on about 50 gigabytes for my Windows partition, and after that, whatever's left I use for my data, unless I want it for other. You can have three or four of these partitions if you've got uh, other reasons for doing it. But uh, I found I need a good 50 or 50 or 60 gigabytes for my Windows um, partition, which seems to be enormous compared with what we had. 10 years ago. But what I've done is basically to use that external program and I've divided the hard drive into two pieces and as far as the computer is concerned, it now thinks I've got two completely independent hard drives in my computer and I can do whatever I want with them. To this point, you're allowed to kick your computers. We're all getting too frustrated. Let's just talk about Windows 7 for a moment. Now in Windows 7, um, Windows 7 has now built in some partitioning tools into the program itself. So you don't have to go out and buy anything new. Uh, and in fact, the, we got Windows 7 on all the computers in the learning center and we went through and we partitioned the drives using this program so that we would be able to have a separate partition for students and a separate partition for the instructors as well as the Windows program. So we basically, on the computers that you'll see out in the learning rooms, have got three separate filing rooms. One that's got Windows on it, 
Windows 7 that we use for teaching. There's one for the students, so if you all want to keep some information that you've uh, prepared some photographs or put some information up, you can put it in there. And we thirdly got one for the instructors where we put information that we perhaps need to help with our teaching. So all the uh, course descriptions, etc. we can include. So, how do I partition my drive in 7? Now, in, I'll just show you this quickly, you don't need to read the details, but I went into Windows Help and Support in 7 and I just typed in Partition Hard Drive into there and up came this screen that said create and format a hard disk partition and I got a whole screen of information that told me how to do it. So if you did, you, know, you don't need to remember all the details, Windows tells you step by step how to do this if you wanted to work through it. But let's just walk through the steps. This is the my computer screen in a Windows computer system. So I've got one hard drive, hard disk drive, here we are, the local disk C, 265 gigabytes. So it's a big, uh, big storage area, and we want to divide that up. And the way I found it was I went to administrative tools in the control panel, and I went to computer management, and I went to disk management, and if I'm lucky, yep, I got that screen opened up. And it showed me that I've got my, whoops, sorry, shows me I've got my C drive here that's two, in this particular case, 298 gigabytes and it's healthy and it all works. Now, the interesting thing, and I think this may come back to your question, um, when we bought these computers, it also came up with a little partition at the front that was different, that didn't have a letter associated with it. it didn't have a, they didn't give it a name. Um, it's a block of information that the manufacturers are installing on their computers to store information about their machines and also perhaps to install the restore data that you need if something goes wrong with your computer and you want to put it back. So it's something that you will never need to access. You can delete it if you want, but it's probably not wise. But it's, uh, it's put there by the manufacturers of the computer to help you uh, recover the computer if something disastrous goes wrong. They used to give us a CD that we store away somewhere. Now they just block out a bit of the hard drive themselves and store the information in there. So we start off, we've got this drive over here, the C drive, and I want to uh, basically divide it into more than one block. The way you do it is you right click on the drive, a little menu opens, and uh, one of the choices that I've got is shrink volume. So I do that and it comes up and it says here are the dimensions at the moment and I want to make it smaller so I can actually go through and that's the size before we shrink it, uh, the amount I want to reduce it by and it comes back and I can actually enter the amount of space to shrink. So you just fill in the numbers and you press go and total size after the shrink tells me it's 66 gigabytes and I click shrink and bingo. I've made C drive smaller, and I've got some unallocated space at the end of it. Now, that may seem a little complicated. Yes, ma'am, good question. It's a hard filing cabinet in my mind, but as you make the size smaller, it gets smaller and it gets smaller and smaller. And it's not a problem you make it smaller than it needs to be. The amount of information that's stored in there will stop you making it smaller than that size. So if you're returning, you can, if you've been using the machine just to see, and you have lots of information there, you could not say C is going to be smaller than the total amount of information. Correct. In fact, uh, I wonder if I can show you. Next slide. 
I was going to try and find, uh, um, show how much of it was full, but it doesn't actually show it here. Um, C up there. No, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't show the capacity, but it will stop you making um, making it smaller than it needs to be to store the data. And that's why it, it's most unlikely that you're going to have more than 20 or 30 gigabytes of in information on there. So by making it 50 or 60, you're normally going to be ample size, amply big enough to cover everything. Now, <clears throat> there was one other little wrinkle that I discovered when I did this. Um, some of you may have heard of a little program in Windows called System Restore, which uh, is a way that Windows enables you to move your computer back 24 or 48 hours if you need to. Uh, very useful, works great, but I discovered that when you run Windows Restore, it tends to put the restore information right at the end of the drive, back here. So you've got information stored at the front, which is where your, your, your Windows information is, and they, for some reason, put Windows Restore right at the end. So if you've run Windows Restore for a couple of times, you may find that this program won't let you make the partition any smaller because it thinks it's full. So just a little, let's say, that uh, hopefully doesn't happen too often, but it was something I discovered. about a hard drive crash, it's more about correcting a problem that you created on the computer, either with a virus or a new program which was incompatible with what you've got already. So it, if you load, a, before I install a new program, like Microsoft Word, I would create a system restore point so that if something goes wrong with the installation, I can turn the computer back 24 hours and it will correct the problem for me. Okay, let's just jump ahead. So the key th key thing is that with Windows 7, you have the um, you have the facility built into Windows to be able to do this automatically. And what I've done here is reduce the size of the C drive and created an empty space at the back. Now the next thing to do then is to right click on the unallocated space, and we're going to create a new volume. And I choose that, and it goes through a wizard, which is great. Ask me how big you need to make it, how, what, what the size wants to be, I adjust the size. Ask me a couple more questions, format the drive and the file system. Yes, and you click finish, and lo and behold, it's all done. So, the key message is, I think, that if you're using Windows XP and you want to do this, you've got to go to Amazon or somewhere to buy a little program that enables you to divide up the hard drive and I've used a Cronus Disk Director. There are other ones out there as well. There's actually three ones out there, but I've never actually tried them. Um, if it's Windows 7 and you do it when your computer is reasonably new, then you don't need anything extra, and you can just uh, say, well, the only thing we want to do is to separate up a hard drive and break it down, make it work better. So, having gone through all this pain and anguish, um, let's just think a minute as to why we bother to do all this. I think the first thing is it makes it possible to have two operating systems on your computer. And I found it very difficult to decide whether I wanted to give up XP. I also actually had a copy of Vista on my computer. So now I've, I've got the choice on my computer when I turn it on of going to either Windows XP, Windows Vista or Windows 7. But at the moment I'm using Windows 7 100% of the time and I'm getting very close to saying I'll uh, delete the other two. But it does give you the opportunity to try it out and get used to it. Um, it makes backing up the data, my personal data, very simple. And I'll show you how I do this. But it, basically, I keep all my personal data in, the, in a separate partition. And I just tell my backup program to back up everything in that partition 5 o'clock every night. And the final thing is that if something goes wrong with Windows itself, if there's a major catastrophe and Windows stops working, uh, and believe me or not, it can happen. Uh, I've even had people whose Windows systems have failed when they've downloaded the updates from Microsoft. 
doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. But with this model, I could reinstall Windows, put it, put it all back together, and the data, my personal information, is still stored in a separate partition and isn't uh, affected at all by reinstalling Windows. If I hadn't separated it out, and I'd reinstalled Windows when I'd only had a C drive, then all my personal information would disappear. I'd have a nice new Windows operating system, but all my personal stuff would have gone. So let's just have a, a quick look. That was about running Windows XP and Windows 7. So I created XP. Uh, when you do it that way, the second uh, partition is empty, and then you say, I want to install Windows 7, and you can tell Windows 7 where to go. You put it in there, and it fills the space. Backing up my personal data. This is the way that I've done it at home. I've got my laptop, my desktop, and I bought myself a, an external USB drive, which plugs into the, into the computer and I can carry around its portable. What I did was, I took my, um, my external drive, and using the, uh, the SP software, I divided it into three separate partitions. I called it Backup 1, Backup 2, and Image. So I've taken this, uh, this hard drive and I've split it into three separate filing rooms. Now the computer itself is split into two. So I've got my windows and programs in my C drive and my personal information data under the D drive. And what I do is every day I take my whole data partition and I back it, whoops, sorry, Okay, so every day I take my data partition here and I back it up to backup one. And I do that, what's today? Tuesday, so I do it on Tuesday. On Wednesday, tomorrow, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to put it in backup two. Oops, I'm going to start jumping ahead. So on Tuesday, what I would, Wednesday, what I would do would be to back it up to here, on Thursday back to here, Friday back to here, so I've always got two copies of my data partition being stored on an external drive. And finally, makes it simple to reinstall Windows if something disastrous goes wrong. This is something else that is use I think is useful. There's a little pro number, of, couple of programs you can get. Um, there's a Cronus True Image, which is the one I use. A number of people use Norton Ghost, and it creates a copy of your Windows partition. So you can actually store that, and if something goes wrong, you can say just replace that image, and it puts it back exactly the way it was when you made the copy. And it takes five minutes. Uh, for those of you who've installed Windows on your computer, you know it's normally about a 45 or 50 minute job, even before you start putting the extra programs on, just to install Windows. I can reinstall my Windows with all the hundred programs that I use, and the whole thing takes five minutes. So, what I've now got is I've got a copy of this down here, and I've got up-to-date copies of my data in two places on my backup drive. And since it's a backup drive, I can unplug it and take it away and keep it safe. And if I want to recover something, I can put the image back from, uh, from there. It needs to have the arrow going the other way, really. But it goes from there up to here. Well, that, that creates the image. If I want to recover the files, I can go to backup one and put it back, because I've got a good copy of it. Or I can go to there, get a good copy of it, depends which day I want. And I can go to the image file and put that back as well. And it just puts them all back very quickly if something goes wrong with my computer. And even if I need to replace the hard drive because it failed completely, I can just divide it up again and reinstall those files and I've got copies of all my confidential information that I want to keep. So, whatever you do, and however you manage your backups, you can use the simplest ways, or anything, even just keeping it on a USB little flash drive, just make sure you've got a copy of your private and personal information, because at some point, you're going to need to pick up the phone to your friends and say, my computer's stopped working, what do I do now? And uh, I've had a few of those phone calls. Secondly, have a plan so you know how you're going to get your computer back working when something goes wrong with it. There will be a copy of this uh, presentation on the internet, probably by tomorrow night. 
Uh, and if you use Internet Explorer to look at it, you'll be able to see all the slides. It works reasonably well, not perfectly, but uh, you should be able to see all the data. And that's it, guys. So try and keep a copy. Yes, sir. Now, if I'm correct, you could use a Cronus True Image to back up your personal data in the same way as you do Replicator. True? Yes, you could. Okay. Yes, you could. I find I, I use a program to back up my data. I was just saying to Fred called Replicator. It's a free program that uh, a lady called Karen has written. And it enables me to say, 5 o'clock every night or any other time I set, copy everything that's on my data partition onto my external hard drive. And it only backs up the things that I've changed. And it takes about a minute and a half. And it seems to me to be a much easier way. The advantage, Fred, is that if I use Replicator, my backups are files that I can read. If I create an image, I've got to reload the image and un uninstall the image before I can read them. You can't open an individual file from within an image very easily. That's a big advantage. Yeah, so I'm, I'm copying the actual files across to my backup. And uh, so if I just clicked on the USB drive, uh, I can open the files from there just as easily as I can from my computer. Okay. Also, if, if you wanted to with Replicator, instead of taking that one big partition, you could probably tell Replicator exactly what folders you want to back up. Every yes, time. you can. Okay. Yes, you can. And you can have, in fact, you can have 20 different folders in separately identified, backed up with different frequencies, or separately if you wanted. Yes, sir. Well, I backed up my stuff on my passport. Right. Now, I didn't right. have a good system as you had, but there's only one thing wrong. When this thing went bad, I'm done. I just wonder whether we should be using two, uh, two uh, remote uh, drives. Well, that, 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 you could do uh, every other day. Well, I think that's right. Drive. As I showed you here, I, yeah. I have on my USB drive, I have two separate copies, but they're still on the same drive. Well, when that one drive that has the three partitions on it goes bad, right. then you're done. Except, I still got it here. Yeah, but you put it on your computer. So go and buy a new well, one of those. Well, I have to say, my computer went down, and I went to get my backup. My backup don't work ah. because it must have got dropped or something. Right. Well, so Paul's going to try to sort it out for me, but I'm just suggesting that to elaborate or go a little further with what you're talking about. Every other day, back up on a dirt <coughs> physical drive. Well, um, I would. Sort of, I didn't want to. Uh, say this, but I'm more paranoid and I've got four or five different copies of copies. So I keep, I, I've, I've done what you suggested. But, uh, uh, that just makes it easy. That works fine. How do you partition the external USB drive? It was just, uh, the system that I use for XP works just as well on the USB drive. Sure, you plug the drive in and the, uh, the Cronus, uh, the program that I use, the disk director, can see the external drive and you say, I want to divide it up. Oh, okay, so you're using a Cronus. I use the Cronus. Cronus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just change the volume, make it smaller, uh, and I put two or three extra drive. In fact, I've probably got four or five blocks on it. And the image is, is actually the Windows itself. Windows, Windows, and, Windows and all the programs. Okay, so and, and that's that. that that's right, because that doesn't change very often. I, I make that, I probably do that no more than once every four or five months. Because it's only, the only time that for that partition, for the Windows and Programs partition changes, is when I install something new. So, uh, oh, and, and it will change with Windows updates and with the virus protection. So when I reinstall my image, it's going to say, I've got three months of Windows updates to do, and my virus protection is out of date. So I connect it to the internet and say, sort it out, and it's done. But it doesn't need me to do anything, apart from wait. What about the reading? Is the reading affected by this at all? Nope. If you go to Windows 7, I would really suggest you go to 4, 
4 gigabytes. Um, if, um, when you buy, if you're buying a new, you probably would need a new computer if you start running Windows 7. So in four, three years' time, when you think my computer really needs replacing, That, that, no, that, that's, that's Office 7. That's not Windows 7. Oh, okay. Window, this is, I'm running XP on this laptop. Um, Windows 7 is the operating system that is the basis of all the decisions a computer makes. And you can only have one or the other. Oh, really? Yeah, you can only, if you've got XP now, if you install Windows 7, it would completely replace XP. Oh, right. And you, your computer isn't big enough at the moment to handle it. That's fine. That, that's not Windows 7. Okay. Well, if you come to one of our classes, you'll see Windows 7 on all the uh, computers we've got out here. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Fred. Yes? Uh, concerning Windows 7, my documents, my pictures, my videos, etc., etc., yeah. you can't really take those libraries and put it in that data partition that you were talking about, can you? How, how does that work? If you want to say that, if you data. open up your, uh, you've got to find the the folder. You've got a My Documents folder on in Windows. So don't do it from the libraries. Do it from My Documents. My Documents will include my pictures. I think they now just call it pictures, videos, and uh, what's the third one? Videos, pictures, videos, and music, picture, yeah, photos. It did, they take drop the My bit, but find the folder itself, which is on the C drive. Uh, and you can then move that into the data, part data partition if you need to. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, a couple of questions. So, uh, but now that you've divided up your uh, drive and you have C and D, yes. and you have your data in D, now don't you have to do something in terms of whenever you save, don't you have to tell the computer that your save is now going to go to D? It will automatically know that, but after you tell it to go to my documents. Once you. Well, in other words, you, so you'll move my documents. Correct. Yes. Okay. But the other thing that doesn't prevent is if you have a hard drive failure, you're still going to have a failure on all those questions. Yes, you are. Everything would, everything would go. Except that's why I back up every day to something different. It's the backup that's important. And the reason I do it this way is it makes it easy to back it up and it makes it easy to recover it if the hard drive gets corrupted rather than destroyed. Okay, and just one other quick thing. Please. Uh, emails. Yes? Emails are not really stored on your hard drive, are they? It depends which email system you're using. I use Outlook, um, which is like Windows Mail, and yes, it's all, it's all my emails are stored on my computer. But if, if you use Gmail, if you use Gmail or Hotmail, email no, they're not on your computer. There are, there are two types of email system. The Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail yeah. is stored in the cloud. Right. Uh, Outlook, Outlook Express, Windows Mail is stored on the computer.
uh, which means that if you've got a, a Word document, it's unlikely the virus gets in. Um, not guaranteed, but unlikely. It's likely to be in one of the files in the Windows folder, which is where they aim for. And if you replace the Windows folder and you've got a separate uh, D partition, then your data's completely independent. As far as the computer's concerned, it's an independent filing room that could be, as far as it's concerned, in another state. It doesn't care. It's, it's not effective. If the hard drive itself fails completely, then you've obviously lost both partitions. Or everything that's on that hard drive. But if you, if, uh, if viruses normally would go to the Windows partition. So sometimes I just have to replace the, if I get a bad virus, I replace the Windows image and uh, I'm back in working again.